Ranger. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. After spending several weeks in the rangeland near Twin Wells, helping to settle the friction that arose between the cattlemen and newly arrived homesteaders, the Lone Ranger and Tonto rode steadily east toward the capital of the Western Territory. It was nearly dark when they reined in near a grove of trees on the outskirts of the city. We'll camp here, Tonto. Sun go down plenty soon, Kimisame. Yes. In a few minutes, I'll be leaving to pay a visit to the governor. It'll be dark by the time I arrive near his mansion. The governor plenty glad to hear there's no range war at Twin Wells. The last time I spoke to him, he was very anxious that the ranchers and the new settlers there could solve their differences peaceably. Maybe now him tell other towns how people of Twin Wells may compromise of trouble and not fight. Perhaps he will. That kind of knowledge can be of great help to many sections of the West where homesteaders plan to settle near cattle country. Mm -hmm. Let me wait for you here, Kimisane. Good. I'll be back here later tonight. Adios. Adios. As the Lone Ranger headed toward the capital from the west, far on the opposite side of the city, a lone courier was approaching from the east. In his message pouch, he carried a special dispatch for the territorial governor from the offices of the federal government in Washington, D.C. It wasn't until early the next morning that the Lone Ranger returned to his camp after his visit with the governor. Tai, Kimasabi. Me wait all night. Me ready to search for you. I would have arrived here earlier, Tato. But as I was about to leave the governor's mansion, the courier arrived from Washington with a personal message for the governor. A message important for you? A foreign diplomat and his wife are touring the West with a party of buyer's representatives from their country. And they maybe plan to buy cattle? At present, they're making a survey of future business possibilities. But meanwhile, our government officials have become concerned. They've asked the governor to furnish extra precautions to ensure the personal safety of the group. Government men think Indians attacked them? No, their route has been carefully planned to avoid trouble of that sort. But since then, it has been learned that the diplomat and his wife and friends are carrying jewels and money that might attract outlaws. The government is anxious to prevent anything that might endanger the success of their visit. The governor asked for help, Kimisami? Yes, Tonto. And he gave me this letter of introduction in case we need the cooperation of local law enforcement authorities. Where are diplomat men now? They'll arrive at the hotel at Rockton tomorrow. Well, that's plenty far from here. By leaving now, we can arrive there by tomorrow night. Are you ready to go, Tonto? Uh -huh. The following afternoon in the Rockton Hotel, two men, Rex Jordan, an Englishman who was a professional jewel thief, and Bat Anders, his American partner, forced their way into the suite occupied by the visiting diplomat and his wife. Not a living soul here, Rex. No, I didn't expect anybody. After their valet left this afternoon to walk around the town, I was fairly sure we'd find this suite empty. You figure on everything, don't you? In my profession, Batman boy, you have to. Otherwise, you find yourself behind bars. Now, look behind those pictures. Yes, but... Oh, come on, hurry. We haven't got all day. There's no telling how long they'll take inspecting that cattle ranch. Nothing here. Well, keep on looking. It must be somewhere. Maybe she left it in a safe downstairs. There is no safe bat. I checked that. I doubt if there's anybody outside of her own party who realizes that she has such an expensive jewel. That sheriff sure sounded like he did when he recognized you on the street this morning and hauled you in and asked you what you were doing around here. He's probably never even heard of the Marston Diamond. It's simply that, well, a uh, uh, good jewel thief does acquire a reputation. When he finds out that diamond's gone, he's going to know you took it. Yes, well, I've been thinking too much about this diamond to stop myself from taking it now. We'll have to get out of this part of the country fast. That's why I took you on as a partner, Bat. You don't know much about jewels, but you better know the quickest trail out of here. Sure, sure. I'll do my best. Well. How wouldn't you know it? Wow, look at that. I wonder when people will begin to be more careful with their jewelry. Perhaps it's because they haven't got my admiration and respect for beauty. What about the rest of the stuff? Oh, trash compared to this. We'll leave the other jewelry here. She may not miss it at first. I get it. That means we'll have a few extra hours for our getaway. Right. I'll make quite certain to put everything back in its proper place. And then we'll make our getaway. Right. 
The following evening, after reaching the outskirts of Rockton, the Lone Ranger sent Tonto on into town to learn more details of the diplomatic party. Tonto soon returned with the news that the famed Marsden Diamond had been stolen the day before. Does the sheriff have any idea who might have stolen it? Him sure Rex Jordan at Bad Adner steal diamond, Kimisabi. Rex Jordan? I've seen him, a professional jewel thief. Sheriff see them yesterday morning before robbery. Then after Diamond reported missing, Rex and Bat not in Rockton. Did anyone see them right out of town? Mm, old man see them head east from Rockton. They've had a long head start. No wind or rain here for two days, Kimisabi. Maybe trail will be still fresh. Let's hope so. We've no time to lose. Come on, Tunnel. Several days later, the two men who had stolen the Marsden Diamond raced away from a town many miles to the east of Rockton. Their flight had been cautious and stealthy at first, but when, in the strange town, they learned that the one lawman they dreaded and feared most was searching for them, their caution quickly turned to panic, for they knew now they were being hunted by the Lone Ranger. Despite their almost frantic desire to escape, they soon were forced to give their horses a much-needed rest. I'm starved, Jordan. How long are we going to keep this up? As long as we have to, Batman boy. That may take weeks. Yeah, right you are. You crazy. We can't last that long. Even if we steal fresh horses every 10 miles all along the way. You want to make a stand and fight it out, I suppose? Of course I do. That's the only smart thing to do. Well, I'm sorry, old boy, but it's not my dish of tea. Leaping lizards. What do you mean by that? I don't fight with a gun unless I'm absolutely forced to. I'm a jewel thief. And a rather high-class one. I do say so myself. You're an odd critter, Jordan. Sound like a real city dude. But you don't fool me. I've seen you with a six-shooter. Seen you plug men in cold blood. Makes me think you got ice water running in your veins. That's a harsh indictment, Bat. I only kill when I'm forced to kill. What about the masked man, the one known as the Lone Ranger? He's forcing you, ain't he? Yes, but I refuse to let him choose the battleground. Out here in this wilderness, he'd have the advantage. He knows this country like the back of his hand. When I stand and fight, it'll be in the town. Then we'll both be on an equal footing. Well, you're the boss. I think we better get going. Meanwhile, a few miles behind the outlaws, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had found the trail. Now the horse is beginning to get tired, Kimasabi. Do you think we catch up to them soon? We'll keep an even steady pace, Tano, and conserve our strength. They can't hold out much longer. Why are them always head east? They probably plan to dispose of the jewel in the underworld of an eastern city. And Sheriff, we talk to plenty upset when him hear of robbery. Besides being a crime, it's, it's a great embarrassment to the people of the West that a visiting diplomat is robbed while out here. Mm, maybe foreign man and woman think this country full of outlaws. If they do, it may harm the West's possibilities for an overseas market. You see, there are several representatives of foreign cattle buyers with the diplomat. It's another reason why we must stop Anders and Jordan before they get out of the territory. Come on, Silver. All right, chummy, let's go right ahead. I beg your pardon, Bosco. I'm afraid we are being pursued. All right, all right, you got us. Don't shoot. Where do you keep your grub, Tenderfoot? What seems to be the trouble, boys? Uh, looking for the nearest cafe? Never mind the gab. Where's the food? Unfortunately, you have stumbled onto the famous theatrical team of Boswell and Bosco. Not a traveling purveyor of vegetables. However, I do have a crumb or two in the rear of the vehicle, which I could exchange for a few silver coins. All we want is something to eat, stranger. One false move and we'll have to take your life. We, 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 with alacrity, sir. We, we, with alacrity. <laughs> Come along, old boy. Oh, dear, dear, dear. This is disconcerting, you know. Ah, get over there. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Rex, dig in. Where are you heading, stranger? Uh, by special request of hundreds of patrons of the art of ventriloquism, we have consented to appear in person for an extended run at the Palace Theater in Panamint City. Here, have some water, Rex. Righty ho. Hey, Bat. Suppose you have this gentleman show you where he keeps his money. Yeah, Pop. Where do you keep your money? Uh, up by the front seat. But I can assure you that money and the team of Boswell and Bosco have been utter strangers for a long, long time. <laughs> 
Well, I'm still going to have a look. Come on, let's go. Leave that dummy right here. All right. You insist, sir. You insist. It's not necessary to be crude, you know. Get up there and throw that suitcase down and no tricks. Yes. Hey, Rex, look. Over there near the top of that hill. What are you going to do? Get rid of the evidence for the time being. These dummies generally have a hollow head. Yeah. You better send him on his way. We're split up. Well, what about the diamond? Oh, uh, we'll catch up with that at Panama City. Good. I'll meet you at the Gold Coin Cafe. Fine. There you are. Get this crate out of here. Who? Oh, they're splitting up, Tonto. You go after Bad Anders. I'll get Rex Jordan. Uh -huh. Yeah, come on. <laughs> After subduing the outlaw, the Lone Ranger disarmed him and tied his hands behind his back. Then Tonto appeared, holding his gun on Bat Anders. Get down off horse. Bat give up on me shoot gun from hand. Good work, Tonto. I'm turning you and Bat over to the law. What charges, masked man? You're suspected of having stolen the Marsden diamond. I'm afraid you'll have to prove that, old boy. You won't find any diamond on me. Me neither. We didn't swallow it. It's too big. Oh, shut up, you idiot. He's said enough, Rex. Very few people have actually seen the diamond to know how really large it is. Your partner gave you away. We had nothing to do with it. Why pick on us? Because the robbery was reported to have all the earmarks of yours and Rex Jordan's handiwork. You've been around too long, Rex. The federal authorities have suspected you from the very start. They can suspect all they want to. That doesn't prove anything. When we first saw you, you were beside a wagon. What were you doing there? That's none of your business. Just burden. asking directions. I'll check on that, Jordan. A wagon headed in that direction could only be going to one place, and that's Panaman City. He won't tell you anything because we're innocent, see? We'll let the marshal of Panaman City decide that. A short time later, after taking a roundabout way to avoid having to answer questions about the mask, the Lone Ranger and Tonto arrived at the marshal's office in Panaman City with their prisoners. Don't draw, Marshal. Who are you? What's the mask for? This mask stands for the same kind of law and order as your badge. I don't understand. Keep them covered, Tonto. Tonto? An Indian called Tonto, huh? These will identify me, Marshal Hayes. Silver bullets, huh? You know, I heard about a man that used to ride a white stallion, wear a mask, and use silver bullets. I knew your father when he served with the Texas Rangers. Oh, is that right? He used to tell me about a man they called the... Lo hey, wait a minute. You're the Lone Ranger. That's right, Marshal. I heard about you too, Tonto. A Lone Ranger's Indian friend. Bill, you better pull down the shade so we don't have people in here asking questions. These men are suspected of having stolen the Marsden Diamond. Say, I got a telegraph message about that. The federal authorities are looking for a couple men by the name of Rex Jordan and Bat Anders. I'm sure you'll find these men fit the description in that message. Wait a minute. And here it is. Be on the lookout for two jewel. Yeah, it must be them, all right. You can't jail us without proper evidence, old boy. This masked man knows that we haven't got anything on us that even looks like a diamond. Uh, maybe not. But I've got orders from the federal authorities to hold you on suspicion. All right, uh, Bill, lock him up. This is ridiculous. I want a lawyer. You can't do this to us. Well, we'll see that you get your legal rights. But meanwhile, I want to be sure that you'll be around in case I need you. All right, take him in the back, Bill. All right, I'm telling you, Marshal, I want a lawyer. Tonto searched both men and their equipment, but couldn't find anything. You might search them again to be sure. Oh, I doubt if we'll find anything. From what I understand, this Rex Jordan is a pretty clever old thief. He's too smart to be caught with the goods on him. You got any other ideas? Yes, I have, too. Rex was headed this way when we caught up with him. He may plan to meet someone in town and dispose of the diamond. I'd suggest that Tonto help you look the town over for any suspicious people who Rex might contact. That's a good idea. Secondly, there was a wagon on the road headed this way when we saw Rex and Bat. I want to ride back and see why they stopped it. I see. 
Meanwhile, I'll notify the federal authorities that Rex and Bat are in my custody. Good. I'll leave a trail and make camp just outside of town. Join me before sundown. I may do. If I learn anything, Marshal, I'll let you know. A short time later, the Lone Ranger raced along the road leading out of Panamint City and soon reached Boswell's wagon. Well, if it isn't my old friend, the Lone Ranger, I'm certainly glad to see you. It's been a long time since I saw you last. How are you, Boswell? Nervous, my friend, nervous. I've just been held up by two thieving varmints back the road a piece. That's why I'm here. I saw those two when they stopped you. Tell me, my friend, did you catch them? Yes, they're in the Panamint City Jail right now. Oh. Well, in that case, I feel it my civic duty to lend every assistance to rid the West of craven cowards like those two. Unless enough evidence is found to warrant charges against them, they may be out of jail in a few hours. Oh, uh, well, I expect to remain in Panamint City for quite some time, and they may become very bitter toward me, you know. The Marshal will do his best to protect you against retaliation. Mm. Uh, just uh, what was it, my friend, that you wished to know? Exactly what happened when they stopped you? Uh, why, uh, why, well, no, nothing at all. <laughs> I simply snarled at them and threatened them with their very lives. <laughs> and they took to their heels like spineless coyotes. <laughs> Have you ever seen them before? <laughs> Never laid eyes on them in my life. Then why did they stop you, Boswell? was simply to obtain food and water, my good friend, to alleviate the gnawing pangs of hunger. These two men are suspected of having stolen a famous diamond. We couldn't find it on them. Perhaps they hid it with you. An interesting speculation. There may be a reward for the recovery. <laughs> Let us make a thorough inspection of the entire premises without delay. <laughs> After a fruitless search of Boswell's belongings, the Lone Ranger reminded Boswell to report his encounter with the two outlaws to the Marshal. Marshal Hayes spread word that Rex and Bat in jail, but no one tried to see them. Did the Marshal learn anything? No, Kimisami. That wagon we saw belonged to Boswell, the ventriloquist. Bat and Rex took food from it. Boswell and I searched the wagon, but found no trace of the stolen diamond. What we do now, Kimisami? Tano, instead of looking for the diamond, we'll let Rex and Bat recover it for us. How we do that? Let's call on the marshal. I'll explain my plan as we ride. What's up, old boy? Well, it seems like I don't have enough evidence to hold you, so I've been told to let you go. Did you hear that, Rex? We're free. Huh, I believe that when I see it. Well, you're seeing it right now. What about our personal belongings that the deputy took from us? Well, they're in my office on the desk. Come on. Good plan, my friend. I hope it works. We may know after Boswell's show tonight. Well, meanwhile, I'll notify my men, have them posted around town to see if Bat and Rex try to contact anyone else. I may be wrong, but I think Boswell is the key to that missing diamond. We'll go out the back way, Tonto. Later that evening, Rex Jordan, dressed as if he planned to attend the theater, approached his accomplice in the alley beside the entrance to the dressing rooms of the Palace Theater. Seen anything of the masked man or the Indian? No, I watched the front of this place for the past two hours now. They haven't been back here either. Maybe they left town. No, I'm not counting on it. You better keep your eyes open. Yeah, take this. Either the Indian or the masked man show up. Keep them covered until I get back. We'll shoot them after we get the diamond back. I'm going upstairs to see the old man now in his dressing room. I want to be the first to greet him after his performance. Rex just went up the stairs, Tano. Ah, uh, me see their horses behind theater. Yes, they probably plan to make their getaway from here. But that can mean only one thing. The diamond is somewhere close to Boswell. But how we get to him, that guard stairs with a gun. I'll show you. Follow me. A few minutes later, Rex Jordan entered Boswell's dressing room on the second floor backstage of the theater. Bat. 
Bad Anders. You're not moved. Cop gun. Bosco, my boy, in the terms of the theater. I acclaim your performance tonight as positively scintillating. Stand right where you are, old boy. Great Scott, the outlaw. Give me that. What are you doing? Maybe you don't know it, but tonight you had a most priceless actor sitting right in your lap. The Marsden Diamond. Turn around, old boy. Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have to do this, but... Drop it, Jordan. the Marsden Diamond, Marshal. I'm sure you'll have no trouble in identifying it as the one described in that message. Well, that's quite a stone. Well, nice work, Tonto. I'll see if they're put where they won't see any jewels for a long, long time. Get on your feet, Jordan. Yes, sir. That's the description exactly. If it hadn't been for the masked man here, those two would have been on their way east with that by now. Seems like we owe you two a real debt of gratitude. And I know the federal authorities will be wanting to thank you, too. It's thanks enough to help preserve the good name of the West to our friends from other countries. If we can be of no further service, Marshal, we'll be on our way. You've done enough for us already. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. Goodbye, Boswell. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. <laughs> I sure wish we could work them into the act so they could be with us all the time. You know, after we met up with those two owl hoots in there, Bosco here had the worst headache he ever had. But now he feels better, thanks to that Indian Tonto and the Lone Ranger. Oh, Silver Hoy!